Hey there, I'm Garrett from the Software Training Lab, and today we're going to go over some extra timeline options in Adobe Premiere Pro. Here on the left of your timeline, there are lots of different options that we can adjust. Each track can be locked to prevent any changes from happening to it, and we can also hide any track's video from appearing in the output. Audio has similar options. We can lock tracks to prevent changes, use M to mute tracks. You'll notice here, with the first track muted, I don't hear the car revving, only the music. Secondly, we have solo, which only lets us hear the tracks that we choose. Now, I will only hear the rev and not the music. If you have a microphone set up, you can also choose the microphone icon here to add narration directly to your project. In the top left of the timeline, you'll see a few buttons that control the behavior of the timeline. The first one controls nesting behavior. If you drag in a nested sequence, which we're not going to go into at the moment, this button controls whether all of the clips are brought in as one clip or as individual clips. The second option, looking like a magnet, controls snap behavior. When you drag one clip near the edge of another, they almost want to lock in. You'll notice that as I drag the logo, it almost keeps stopping at the end of every clip. This is really helpful in getting precise edits for your clips. If we turn snap off, these clips will just slide right past each other. I almost always leave snap turned on. However, there is a shortcut S, which turns snap on and off which can sometimes be triggered by accident. So if your clips are not aligning, be sure to check snap. Next up, we have linked objects. Normally, video and audio are linked together. So when I drag one, the other comes along with it. If we turn off linked selection, I can select only the video or only the audio and adjust its position or even delete it. Let's turn it back on. If you don't want to use this toggle every time, you can also hold Alt or Option and select either one or the other. Another important tool here is the marker indicator. Click this button to add a marker on your timeline at the current place of your playhead. You'll see this tiny green icon was added. We can double click on any marker to change its color and even add comments. We can also add markers just by pressing M on the keyboard. I like to use markers to designate new scenes or to indicate a drop in the music. For example, right here in my music, there's a very big moment where it explodes. I press M right when the music drops so I can align my clips accordingly. The timeline also has a lot of overflow options to change the way the timeline works and feels hidden here under the wrench. Feel free to peruse these options and make any changes that might help the way you work. That's all we're going to cover today. Watch our next series of videos to understand how to use motion and tracking on your video projects. Thanks for watching.